Hey guys, what's up? It's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about what it's like to have two babies under 13 months. Or I might title the video two under one because it's YouTube and keywords matter. I delivered our first Earthside baby in December of 2020. And when she was about four months old, I found out that I was four weeks pregnant with her little sister. Do the math. They're like a year and two weeks apart, which is epic, but it's freaking crazy. So in this video, I'm going to talk about surviving the first month of having two under one, or two a year apart. <laughs> we'll start with some quick facts about our living situation so that you can like orient yourself in our life. We'll talk about the parental division of labor and our approximate day and night schedule. And then we'll finish up with how the babies interact or whether they interact and how they get along. Cause you know how one year olds are. It has been an absolutely beautiful first month, but it has been absolute chaos having two babies and a dog under one roof. One more thing if you're new here, we call our babies baby A and baby B so that you guys can keep track. Baby A is older, baby B came second. Let's jump right in. Here are some little details about our life that I feel like are relevant when it comes to creating a schedule for two babies. My husband and I both work from home and we both work on a flexible schedule. But that said, I'm chronically ill so I have random days where I'm out for the count. And we both needed to have time to work because neither of us truly took a maternity or a paternity leave. In fact, I filmed a video for you guys when I was two days postpartum. And that same video went live five days after baby was born. We don't have grandparents in town who can take the babies on a whim but we do have a part-time babysitter. We have a golden retriever named Buddy, but our backyard is mostly dirt, so if he has to go to the bathroom, we have to bring him out front. Buddy is also a service dog, so there's much more time commitment to having a service dog than having a pet dog. I did a video about that. I'm not gonna get into the details now. I mentioned briefly that I'm chronically ill. That, of course, comes with a lot of fatigue and recovering from what happens, and it also means that I'm prone to having these episodes, which is why I have the service dog. I have limitations due to my brain fog, my limb weakness, I can't really bend, lift, or twist very much, and due to my high cranial pressure, I'm not supposed to lift up our older baby, baby A. I also have a lot of food sensitivities, so I'm on a strict diet, which means a lot of cooking here at home. Things would have been a lot simpler this month if that all was not the case. Last but not least, it goes without saying, but I was going through the acute trauma of just having gone through childbirth. So I was also healing during this month and had to take it easy. So how exactly did my husband and I manage to divide up the labor and make it so that everyone was alive and fed and happy and everyone's cups were full? Well, we weren't perfect at it, but in general, my husband took over baby A and I took over baby B. Full time, round the clock. When baby B was born, Baby A was a year and a couple of weeks old. She's comfortable up on her feet, she does walk a little bit, but she actually prefers to crawl still. She's transitioning from two naps to one, and she's on like a mix of solid foods and bottles. Baby B, of course, is a newborn, which means every two or three hours she needs to feed, and that feeding takes about an hour. With Baby B, we're also doing EC, elimination communication, which is basically just infant potty training. With both of the girls, we started them at about three days old, and I did do a video about baby A when she was a couple of months old, and I have my update video coming up. That upcoming video will not only be a one-year update for how EC is going with baby A, but it'll also be the changes that I'm making for EC with baby B. Make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss it. With the EC schedule, it just means that there's a lot of taking the baby to the potty around when we're having feedings. And then when she's not feeding, she's pretty much asleep. That's how it goes for the first month. So when she starts to stir from waking up, I take her to the potty, I feed her on one breast, I take her to the potty, I feed her on the other breast, I take her to the potty, and then she usually goes down for another nap. Naps are one to two hours, after a couple weeks, maybe three hours, and that's how it was for the first month, round the clock. And that was on me. Because of how everything went with baby A, I decided that I wanted to exclusively breastfeed baby B as much as I could. And I'm not talking about pump to bottle, I'm talking about actually having her to the breast. So because of that, I'm doing all of the nighttime wake-ups. My husband and I decided to sleep in separate rooms. So I have our bedroom with the whole thing set up, 
I've got the bassinet next to the bed. I have all my pumping stuff where my husband usually sleeps. I have a whole table, changing table, changes of clothes, lots of diapers, lots of wipes. Anything else I'm gonna need in the middle of the night, it's all on a table that we moved into our bedroom. Meanwhile, my husband is sleeping in our guest room and he has the monitor for baby A. So if baby A wakes up, he goes and takes care of her. And then anything that baby B needs in the middle of the night, which is a lot, I take care of that and it doesn't have to disturb my husband. I'm pointing here because the guest room is right behind me. That was a weird thing to do for you guys. Awkward. Fun fact, I'm also pumping for baby A. So I usually do that in the middle of the night because the middle of the night is the only time that I'm not trying to multitask. So what do I do? I multitask. Somewhere in the 1 a.m. range every night when I'm feeding baby B, I also make sure to pump a five ounce bottle for baby A. That way baby A gets the benefits of breast milk, but she has already been weaned from the breast, so she is using bottles. Baby B doesn't drink everything that I produce overnight anyway. Even on the nights when I tried to be in bed for like 12 hours from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m., it still wasn't quite enough to get a full night of sleep. Because there are so many wake-ups, they're so frequent and they're so long, you're just not getting those long, like, the long stretches of sleep that make you actually feel rested. I'm getting a two hour nap and then a one hour wake and then a two hour nap and then a one hour wake. So even though I really didn't feel like I had time during the day, I napped a lot and I really needed those naps and that was really crucial to keeping the sanity of the entire house intact. Because guys, especially the first two, three, four, five, six weeks with a newborn, you are having rough nights. It's just how it is. It's beautiful, it's lovely to cuddle, it's euphoric, you've got all your hormones, and it's this wonderful bonding experience, but you are not going to sleep. So that's what we did at night. What about during the day? When I was still healing from the birth, like before I could walk around, I would mostly just sit, eat, drink water, and nurse. My wonderful husband would have to bring me everything that I was gonna eat. We have a playpen for baby A in our living room that she can play in and she can't escape. So what we did a lot during those first few weeks is I would sit on the couch where I could see her and I would be sitting and nursing baby B while baby A was playing by herself. If baby A got fussy, I didn't usually need to get up for it. I could usually just play with her by talking to her and that would kind of like lighten her mood and buy my husband more time to finish cooking or heating up things or taking the dog around or whatever. And saying around so that he doesn't hear the W word. One thing that really saved our butts during that time is that we had meal trains set up. During the end of pregnancy, people were like, oh, is there anything we can help with? Every time someone said that, I was like, yeah, actually, can I rain check that to right after the birth? Can you bring us some food? That's it. That's all I want. Can you just bring us some food? And guys, it freaking saved our butts. I think we would have died without all the food that people brought us. It was wonderful. Because again, no grandparents. We had friends and neighbors bring over food just out of the kindness of their hearts. We had a meal train set up through our church, just out of the kindness of people's hearts, strangers I don't even know. And then for regular groceries, we did ordering on the app and then went in for curbside pickup. Everything is about saving time in those first few weeks. Once again, huge shout out to my husband. He had to do all the housework, the cleaning, the cooking, the dog walks, the laundry, the bottles. He did so freaking much for me during that first few weeks and all the time, but he really had to step it up during that. And so I gotta say guys, I'm so grateful for everybody who helped during this time. Ah, I can't. Let me read here, hold on. Where was I on my list? Oh yeah. So the only other thing I have written down for this is that it was an overwhelming amount of housework, even without any work work, which again, we were both doing. So things like refilling the diapers and wipes, even with EC, you're going through a lot of diapers and wipes. And it's like this constant shuffle of like diapers need to go here, diapers are dirty, empty the trash, bring more diapers in for two babies, you know, stuff like that, it adds up. It's so much time. And then pumping. I mean like pumping is a time suck and then you have to wash all the pump stuff and then you have to have all the pump stuff ready again for the middle of the night. So it's like, man, we were burned out on both ends. Burned out on both ends like migraine gents candles. You gotta watch this video guys. It's right at the very end, fire. So I meant to talk about like our actual schedule during the day. I'm so freaking frazzled, I'm trying. The way the daytime usually looked, 
Baby A woke up around 7 or 8 a.m. and she and my husband would go downstairs for breakfast. I would wake up sometime between 7 and 10 a.m. depending on how my night went with Baby B. And whenever I was up, I would go down and join them with Baby B. Let's say I got downstairs at 8 that day. I would do the thing I mentioned before where Baby A is in the pen and I'm watching her and I would sit and nurse Baby B. My husband would cook breakfast. He would usually take the dog out front or sometimes take the dog for a short walk. When we eat breakfast, baby A is confined to her high chair, so that's good. She will self-entertain, she will eat by herself. And then baby B would usually either be napping or she would be on the boob with me while I was eating my breakfast. At that point, I would do everything that I could to watch both babies at the same time so my husband could get any work done. That's usually from like 9 a.m. until 11 or like 9 until noon. And at that point, it's time for baby A to go down for her nap. Remember. I can't lift up baby A, so I would go get my husband from work, say, hey, it's time for her nap, and he would come grab her and take her to go take her nap. If baby B was all fed and ready to go, then me, baby A, and baby B would all take a nap from roughly 11 to 1, on a good day, 11 to 2, but let's be real, that was once. But some days I didn't get to nap at all during that because I would need to be feeding baby B, and maybe baby A had a short nap. How the cookie crumbles sometimes. Assuming we are all able to fall asleep, my husband would wait one hour to guarantee me one hour of napping, and then he would take baby A's monitor, bring it into my bedroom, like sneak it up against the door so that I could hear baby A, but he wouldn't wake me. And at that point, he would go take Buddy for a walk. <sighs> this is insane to say out loud. This is crazy. Some days we had a babysitter come over at 1.30 p.m. to watch baby A. So, whenever I woke up from my nap, somewhere around noon, one, I would wake up and feed baby B, and once baby B is back asleep, I have a couple hours to get all of my work done. Yay, a couple hours. Wash my pump stuff, eat, make sure I'm ready for tomorrow, get all the diapers and wipes ready for tonight, film a video, edit a video, get it posted to YouTube. That all happens during that time. But having baby A taken care of means that my husband also got to work during that time. Baby A is usually a really good sleeper, but she broke three new teeth during the time when baby B was in her first month. So that was pretty brutal. She has the top four, the bottom four, and then it skips one, and she got two molars. Are they molars yet? And one big tooth on the bottom, one big molar on the bottom. Bad timing though, maybe like don't do that when we have an infant, like a newborn, like a week old newborn baby A next time, just saying. The babysitter would leave at 4.30. At that point, once again, I'm on baby duty as much as I can be. Baby A goes back in her pen, which she was usually happy to do because she was just exploring with the babysitter for a couple hours. I would sit and nurse baby B, or I would sit in the pen with baby A, and my husband could take Buddy for another walk or take him outside to pee, and then also come in, heat up dinner, get dinner ready. Since baby A is transitioning from two naps to one, Every once in a while she would take a second nap in that like 5 to 7 p.m. range for about an hour. If we got that time together, and especially if baby B was also asleep, my husband and I tried to spend that time together. That's time that we would usually be cooking, so instead of cooking we would heat up something that our friends cooked for us and we would instead be spending that time together. Dating. Adult time. It's very nice. So, um, we did a puzzle of Zion. We played a couple of board games. We played Photosynthesis and Settlers of Catan. I'll link those below. Subscribe while you're down there. I would usually feed Baby B again, and I would also usually eat again. I eat dinner twice every day. Once I could move around a little bit more, I started helping out around the house with light stuff, like I could be the one scrambling the eggs in the morning. Which means, as long as Baby A was self-entertaining in her pen and Baby B was asleep, I could be the one cooking breakfast and manning the whole fort, while well, my husband did literally anything. He could take a shower, he could actually get ready, he could take the dog on a longer thing. And the other thing that started happening is that baby B started being able to have longer stretches of sleep at night after just a few weeks. So instead of being able to sleep for only two hours, she can sleep for three hours now. And I know that doesn't sound like a huge deal to you probably, but when you're the one sleeping while she's sleeping, it's a huge freaking deal. What that means is instead of getting up with her four times every night, I get up two or three times every night, which means I can eliminate a lot of my daytime naps, which means I can help out more around the house, or instead of napping while baby A is napping, I can do this. 
right now is when I would be napping, but instead I'm able to film because I slept last night. Don't get it twisted though, like I'm still wearing my jammies. I still haven't finished my lunch. This makeup's from yesterday, like I don't have it together yet. But I skipped my nap and I still have energy. Very last thing that I wanna talk about because I feel like it is so freaking important and it's not talked about enough. Guys, dad needs rest too. Everyone's like, Jen, are you getting enough sleep? Jen, are you feeling rested? And honestly, very few people have asked my husband how he's doing or how he's sleeping or whether he has had time to himself. All the focus is on the baby and the secondary focus is on me. But to me, my focus is on my husband because I couldn't have done this without him. We're a team. So as soon as I was able to do it, I tried to prioritize getting rest for him. I tried to tell him like, hey dude, go drum. I can watch the babies for an hour. Go get on your drum set. Or I'd encourage him to have some alone time, take a bath, go on a hike with a friend, Go get a massage. He just got a massage this morning. And above all else, just recognition. I try to shower him with praise and thank him for everything that he's doing. Make sure that he knows that I notice how much freaking work that he is putting in. And it's not just that he's putting in work. He's putting in that mundane, normal, monotonous, everyday work that is vital but doesn't feel very productive. He probably doesn't feel that fulfilled from bringing me another glass of water, but he just saved me the hassle of needing to walk over there with my undersides not feeling good and then walking back. And like, that's a big game changer to me. Every time he brought me food, he saved me walking. He helped me heal faster. Every time he took the dog around, he did something for our family. And so I tried to constantly remind him of that. Like every time I remembered, like, hey, thank you. I appreciate you. I see you. I'm, I'm so sorry that we're all so needy right now, that everyone is constantly pulling from you and none of us can really give back yet. But we see you and we appreciate you. And this is a temporary time. We knew leading into this that this was going to be Jen's time. You know, it's my time to rest. And that means that he had to really step it up. And he did. And I appreciate him for that. Let's talk about the babies. The baby's getting along. Do they get along? Do they interact? Uh, sorta. In the beginning, we definitely ran into some emotional contagion where they set off each other's cries. When baby B cried, it was really sweet. Baby A would go, and just like very slowly, it would turn into a more and more like, <laughs> and then she would start crying. But it was interesting. She kind of like waited for us to see how she should react, but usually she ended up sympathy crying or empathy crying. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know which is which. And also baby A crying too loud would wake up baby B and then baby B would be crying and then baby B needs to go through the whole cycle of things, the feeding, the potty and all that before she was usually willing to go back down again. And either of them crying makes Buddy say, no thanks, and he starts ringing his bells to go outside. I don't blame him, but it's very annoying timing. Now, baby A doesn't really know how to be gentle yet, not reliably enough to introduce her to a newborn. So their interactions are very limited and 1000% supervised. Baby A might also throw or drop toys by accident, so I have to be careful of that as well. One thing I do like to do is put baby A inside her pen and put baby B right outside the pen so that baby A can see her through the gate. I can do the same thing by putting baby B into baby A's crib while baby A and I are playing on the floor in her room. That way she was free to go and investigate the baby and then come back and play with me how she wanted to. And that got rid of the novelty of the baby being around. For first contact, I offered her baby B's little foot so that, I almost said her name, so that baby A could sort of touch her foot, touch her hands, make that skin to skin contact and realize like, oh my gosh, she has hands just like me. And in the very beginning, if I were to try to nurse or hold baby B while I was on the floor, baby A would sort of just try to come crawl on top and join us. That doesn't work well because that will smash the newborn. After some time and exposure and repeatedly telling baby A to be gentle with baby B, now we're at the point where I can sit and nurse baby B in the pen with baby A, and baby A knows that she should only come and join me on the opposite shoulder. So if baby B is nursing here, baby A will come and hug me over here. It's straight magic hugging both of them at the same time, holding them together. It just, it freaking kills me, guys. It kills me. There's a very slight bit of jealousy, I think, but I'm also not really sure if baby A is old enough to understand what jealousy really is. 
The same way we were careful with giving Buddy individual attention when Baby A came, we're now being very careful to give Buddy and Baby A attention after Baby B came. But a huge benefit to the babies being so close together is that Baby A, in a lot of ways, is just too young to understand. And this point sort of inspired me to maybe consider making a video about the pros and cons of having the babies so close together. So let me know if that's a video that you would like to see. For the most part, Baby A actually gets extremely excited whenever Baby B enters the room. In the morning, when I say good morning, I say good morning to Baby A, and then I hold up Baby B and I say, oh look, it's little sister. Baby A gets so happy. Baby A tries to share bottles. Baby A tries to share toys. So far, so good. I'm really excited to see how their relationship develops and hopefully jealousy doesn't pick up or continue. So, that is how we have managed to live with two babies and a dog and a sick lady. That's that. I'm too tired to really wrap this up properly, guys, and I have my postpartum midwife appointment in 20 minutes. So, I'm going to finish scarfing down my lunch, chug this water, get the heck out of here. You might notice a pattern that I'm always like running out of here at the end of videos. It's chaos. It is really chaos over here. But guys, it is the most beautiful and amazing chaos to be a part of. It was very difficult being pregnant while still having a baby who couldn't walk yet. But guys, now that both babies are here, I'm like, yes. Everything has clicked into place. Everything feels so good. This is a classic example of you never know what you need until it lands in your lap. Baby B was our little surprise. Not an accident, but definitely a surprise. And thank goodness she came. Thank goodness we have her. All right, I'm gonna go to the midwife. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna film another video for you guys, hopefully. I'm gonna change out of my jammies. Do I have anything else to say? Make sure you subscribe. Yeah, see you guys later.